ladies and gentlemen. Would you just look at it? Doesn't that look appetizing? Well, you might be consuming mass amounts of genetically modified viruses, a.k.a. bacteriophage, and... Don't even know about it. You've probably never even heard of it unless you've been watching Leak Project for the past couple of years and you saw a few podcasts that I've done a while back in reference to bacteriophage. This is an image with an electron micrograph of bacteriophages attached to a bacterial cell. So these viruses inject themselves into E. coli and then destroy the E. coli and produce a bunch more of these nanobots. I'm just calling them nanobots because they're small. I'm not saying that they're made out of titanium, or are they? No, they're not, but they might have those somewhere down the pipeline. But bacteriophage, let me just give you a little bit more of an idea what this stuff does. I mean, it looks like some type of nanobot that was created in a lab, and this stuff literally implants itself onto the bacteria and then it injects itself look at that it's just oozing itself into this bacteria producing more bacteriophage so they have there's companies out there that literally produce specific bacteriophages that they say completely natural so they don't have to list it on the label and it's a very spooky looking virus in my opinion i mean it doesn't look natural it looks like something that was created as a robot slash alien slash war of the worlds <laughs> agent and i'm i'm being a little bit sarcastic here yet at the same time you've probably heard the story truth and humor how far does this stuff go and i want to show you this M13 bacteriophage, which is a virus that infects the bacterium E. coli. It's composed of a circular single-stranded DNA molecule encased in a thin, flexible tube made up of about 2,700 copies of a single protein called P8, the major coat protein. So the interesting thing about these phage particles is the way that it can be used to actually attack tumors, cancer tumors. This is where it gets fascinating in the medical field. This specific genetically modified virus, literally a genetically modified virus, read about this at Science News. Here's the title. Cancer-killing virus acts by alerting immune system. Vaccine-like effects suggest potential for combination with cancer immunotherapy. Published just last month, University of California, San Francisco, a new study has shown that a cancer-killing oncolytic virus currently in clinical trials may function as a cancer vaccine. In addition to killing some cancer cells directly, the virus alerts the immune system to the presence of a tumor, triggering a powerful, widespread immune response that kills cancer cells far outside the virus-infected region. You can see this image right here showing a tumor with green patches of vaccinia virus infection surrounded by red blood vessels. Credit image by Donald McDonald Lab. So definitely I'll leave the link in the video description box on this. And they're coming up with these different viruses to specifically attack cancer cells, tumors. I think that's fantastic. I hope that there's incredible success with this. And I also wonder about the side effects of a virus being created that might be tweaked just a little bit or somehow based upon natural evolution or some type of mutation or something, it turns it into a virus similar to the film I Am Legend. And if you remember the film I Am Legend came out in 2007, uh, you know, post-apocalyptic science fiction horror film with Will Smith where there is this virus, this genetically, vi genetically modified virus that is created, and what it does is it actually is designed to kill cancer. And it ends up taking out the majority of the population, turning people into mutant zombies that can't be exposed to sunlight, etc. want to give a huge shout-out to GetTheTea.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been taking this stuff called Allison Advanced and Eighth Element, 
from GetTheTea.com, and I absolutely love these supplements. The product is top-notch, the best quality products I've ever had. If you go to GetTheTea.com, they have all sorts of good supplements designed for helping with your immune system, helping with your digestive system, digestive support. energy. There's this stuff called colostrum. It's in powder form. They've got vanilla, chocolate, mocha flavor. I love that stuff also. Now, I just got back from a road trip. I was on the road for a couple weeks, and I didn't have a, a chance to eat as healthy as I wanted to every night. Taking that colostrum stuff definitely helped with uh, my digestive system when I was having to eat some of the food that you might consider... Uh, not you know, like a last resort, you know what I'm saying? So even some of these fast food places, you get the most healthy option and you eat the food and you, it almost leaves like this chemical t aftertaste. You're like, oh my gosh, that's supposed to be the healthy stuff? And you wonder where it comes from? And taking that colostrum definitely helped with me. So anyway, check them out, getthetea.com. Support our sponsors, support Leak Project. Most importantly, support yourself. Great products, getthetea.com. Let them know Leak Project sent you so back to this film, I Am Legend, good movie. And, you know, Will Smith is a, a U.S. Army virologist, and he makes it through these mutations. Then you get into Resident Evil, where they create this virus that genetically modifies its host to become a super fighting machine. Then you find out about CRISPR technologies that can literally rewrite DNA, like designer DNA. Then you get into the DNA possibilities with storage. You could fill a room with a DNA server and store all the world's data in one room. You can read about this, sciencemag.org. I'll leave the link in the video description box. Read about the order of quantum dots using genetically engineered viruses. I'll leave the link in the video description box for that, mit.edu. And, you know, once again, this is that bacteriophage. We'll go back here. Scientists are close to rewriting the genetic code of life. 62,000 DNA changes later. Geneticists have made a step forward in recording the genome as we know it, replacing 62,214 DNA-based pairs in a synthetic E. coli genome. Recording genomes so extensively could lead to the development of organisms that are resistant to viruses, could even allow biologists to code for all new synthetic amino acids, literally allowing for the reprogramming of life. And how far will that go? I mean, will they use it? Let's look at this here for a minute. I want to show you something. Here's the patent to use M13 bacteriophage as a chemo-addressable nanoparticle for biological and medical applications. Here is, and, and I'll leave the links, I'm going to leave the links for all of this in the video description box. Make sure to go to the articles and read the articles as well, because I'm just skimming through it. I'm just giving you the, the headlines, the cliff notes. You definitely want to read these articles. They're well written. This is the DNA structure showing how it will self-assemble based upon nanoscale structures that are designed like the properties of DNA. This is molecular recognition, properties of DNA molecules. This is an actual picture. You can see excellent article put together here. You know, you've got the, the four different base pairs of DNA. It's like a uh, dual binary code almost. If you think about it, everything breaks down into code. They're rewriting cells. They're putting, they're literally putting new data into cells and able to create these designer cells, designer biology. I'm going to share this with you also. Let me go back here. Well, you know, I'll just leave that on for a moment. Here's the bacteriophage. A virus infecting and replicating within bacteria. I wanted to share with you something else I'm looking for right now. Oh, well.
Maybe it'll come to me while I'm getting ready to close this podcast out. CRISPR technology. Rewriting DNA. They're actually saying that it is easy. Check this out. If you go, just type in rewriting cells. Rewriting DNA to fix diseases. Scientists say they genetically edited the cells of a human for the first time, November 21st, 2016. That's publicly. National Post. Read all about it. Rewriting DNA to fix diseases. Diseases. I like to call it dis-ease. Because it's out of balance. China about to rewrite human DNA using revolutionary tool, CRISPR. New technology lets scientists easily rewrite living organisms. Science alert. And then, I mean, you can go back to 2012. Rewriting DNA to understand what it says. I went into that article, Science Daily. Like, okay, well, we don't know exactly how DNA works. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from scratch. We're going to rewrite it so that we can understand it that way. It's like reverse engineering. It's fascinating. It's, It's a genius. If you can do it, why not? And then I'm thinking to myself, what are the implications of this? How far will this go? Let's go back to the Sumerian tablets where it was talking about how Enki and his counterpart, his, um, you know, his wife, his companion, they were literally creating people and they were making mistakes on some people. They weren't making them properly. They were having drinks at the same time. Now, I wonder how much truth there is to that. Were there people back in the day that were getting buzzed and then in a laboratory creating humans? Like, oops, we messed up on that one. We need to rewrite with it. Were they printing them like we're going to do in the future? Literally, we're going to print people? Think about that. They're printing organs. They're printing parts right now, biological machines that are made of genetically modified bacteria because they're more resilient than mammalian uh, mammalian cells. They're using bacteria and the cells from certain bacteria, and they're genetically modifying them, and they're printing them up as machines. What are they going to do if they take Bob's DNA and they, they decide to print up a giant ear as a saddle? <laughs> Bob's ear. You got Bob and a giant ear that's printed up with a 3D printer. And you, you, you plug it into some post, put it in the front yard, and you've got this giant ear. And you somehow find a way to wirelessly connect that giant ear, the sound that it's picking up, to your brain. So you can be, you can turn it on and off, though, right? You've got this like machine that you can push a button. It's like, okay, I want to listen to this giant ear that's plugged into my front yard because the the sound that it picks up is incredible. I mean, it, it's picking up stuff as low as like one hertz, all the way up to a hundred thousand kilohertz. I mean, the, the the frequency band of sound that it's picking up is phenomenal, and it's finding a way to transfer that back to you. And it has a scale of anywhere from, you can go from 10 feet to 10,000 feet in diameter. Based upon this giant ear that you printed and then plugged into a post and plug, you know, and, and implanted it. Put that post right there in your front yard. And then you could even like print up ears, like miniature ears, and genetically modify them so they've still got this very superior sound connection and then you could hook them up to like hot air balloons and you could let all these hot air balloons go that are connected to your ears and you could pick up sound in the atmosphere and then you could find a way to genetically modify ears and connect them to like f-35s and different jets and planes and and different you know tesla rockets that are getting sent into space and stuff like that and then you could hear what's out in space and then just wirelessly you know have some way to maybe you wouldn't even need to have technology because of this biology you just take a certain part of your mind and then you implanted into that DNA that then prints up your, you know, and your cells you're printing up via 3D printer that you purchased for, I don't know how much it'll cost you in the future. You print it up, you plop it up, boom, there you go. You print up your balloons, you print up your, your little rocket ships, you can print it all up. You can literally print up a biological rocket ship that's also connected to your brain so that as far as you can shoot it out into space, it will then send that information back to you. And then you could find ways to open up portals into different dimensions and find ways to jump large amounts of space, like folding space. So you could get to Mars in a second. You could get to Venus in a second. You could get to the Trappist-1 star system in a second. If you wanted to find Nibiru, 
whether it's a planet, whether it's a, a ship, whether it's a city here that was destroyed, whether it was some reference to a crossing point of the stars and planets that are already in place, whether it was Jupiter, you know, just, just get there, boom, find a way to actually manipulate the fabric of time so you could go back in time, go forwards, backwards, any way in the time spectrum that you feel valuable for your data collection. And hey, you've got your 3D printer. How cool is that? So I think I'm divagating a little bit here. We started with the rewriting of DNA, CRISPR technologies, and now we're describing, I'm saying we because you're here with me and I'm feeling your energy. Which one of it was you that came up with this idea that sent this to me for the giant ear implanted in your front yard? And then the miniature ears that are connected to the giant ear connected to hot air balloons and rockets that you then print up with your biological makeup. Or Bob. You could use Bob as an example. I mean, what about Bob? Definitely what about Bob? Be excellent to each other, ladies and gentlemen. Be excellent to each other. Support our sponsors, GetTheTea.com. Support yourself with their amazing products. I'll bet you a lot of you that are on the fence are like, oh, you know, I want to try it, but I just, I don't know, I'm lazy. I mean, things are working for me. Or maybe you're just like, yeah, I really want to try it, but I would rather spend that money on an energy drink. Yeah, I want to try it, but I would rather spend that money on going out to a movie. Yeah, I, I, I want to try it, but I'd rather spend that money on, I don't know, some, some food that isn't really that good for me. Ah, uh, you know, the stuff I got's okay. I get it from, you know, this one store just down the street. If you decide to try Get the Tea, if you go to Get the Tea and you use their products, you'll be glad you did. Every comment that I've read on League Project that's tried Get the Tea, that's gone to Get the Tea, loves the product. That's my shameless plug. You'll thank me later. Be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see.